arsonists do move in. Van I went to a school fire not long ago where gasoline was poured through the book return slot at the library. It caused a $100,000 fire. The women of the neighborhood came around me and said, what can we do? We don't like this. We will now have an arson line that they can report suspicious activities around schools. If people see suspicious people in alleys, if they are aware that there's peculiar activities going on in businesses, the important thing of this whole arson awareness program is that we do not want to know the tipster's name. The Hills, as the mayor just told you, I lost my home on July 3rd. Now, we in Los Angeles have been concerned about the fact that arson is the fastest growing crime in America. About a year ago, an arson suppression task force was appointed for the purpose of exploring ways of suppressing arson to crime. And secondly, uh, they came up with a comprehensive program to deal with it. Foremost among uh, their recommendations was a public awareness program. And we're pleased that uh, Paul Ditzel and a core of volunteers working with the task force has come up with a plan and a program uh, working with WeTip uh, to take telephone calls anonymously uh, from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight in the beginning and hopefully uh, on a 24-hour basis later on. People can call in report any suspicious circumstances, any information they may have about uh, suspected arson or uh, evidence of suspect or suspects who may be involved in these incidents. There is an arrangement for a $500 reward for anyone turning in evidence that leads to the prosecution uh, of the uh, suspect and, and his or her conviction. We believe that if people will co opt community in Los Angeles County as well as other parts of the state. This is a statewide number, uh, arson hotline. The number is uh, the area code 800 47 arson. Things that, uh, that we in government hear uh, quite often is that we each uh, are very protective of our own turf and uh, have a very difficult time cooperating with people. One of the significant differences about the Mayor's Arson Task Force, different from that type of criticism, is the fact that the task force uh, covers the whole county, covers all agencies within the county. Uh, we have included uh, people in the media, people uh, in the private sector, uh, such as Mr. Ditzel. Uh, it's a group of government and citizens working together to solve a very serious problem. I think that uh, that we've developed several programs that uh, are not coming out today. We have a program that identifies, um, that helps an arson investigator make a complete um, investigation at a, at a fire or an arson incident. We've developed training programs for uh, prosecutors and judges. Uh, the Arson Task Force is really uh, representative of the ideal activity that government should be involved in, and that is solving community problems with the community participating. And that's really kind of what we're here about today, to ask and inform the community that 800 In my own neighborhood, for example, and would have been up there almost every day throwing bottle rockets on my roof, throwing bottle rockets in my home, and throwing bottle rockets in the debris. Could I ask you what, since you're trying to make people aware, what people should be looking for in terms of the information that would be valuable to the fire investigators in tracking down arsonists? People 
should be aware of even the, the least suspicious activity. We are going to embark upon a program of massive public information, as I said, but we are also going to target this for individual neighborhoods. For example, the anonymity of whoever calls in with a tip. So it's something the public has to become aware that arson is not something that happens in downtown Los Angeles or in underprivileged areas of this city. Arson is occurring everywhere, and I'll cite you a further example. My 14-year-old son Bradley is now very arson aware. He discovered a young man who was threatening and who indeed has been setting brush fires up in the Porter Ranch area of Northridge. And arson, he has reported this to arson and the arson unit investigators are now working on this case. That's exactly the kind of public cooperation we're after and we think that we will get. If you see something that's abnormal, you should report it. That's what the phone number is for. You should identify license plates, description of cars, description of people, um, unusual activity. Is a car parked there uh, longer than it should be? Has it been there for a couple of days? Is there a strange car that drives through the neighborhood periodically? Uh, last year we had someone who identified um, a car in an area where we had a major brush fire. They, they saw the license number and identified that it was a pickup. Provided that information for us and uh, it allowed the arson investigators to follow through and, and identify the person that was in that area. So I think anything that can help an investigator identify strange people or strange activity uh, will help us deal with this problem. And I think the, the point is that it